The reason we do hip feng shui is so we know exactly the memory layout because we want the fling pointer to point to the deterministic piece of memory that we control. We know where to point the fling pointer since we can make it point to user and memory, but we need to control it in the first place. So once we have freed our KNS check and we actually replace it with some data we control, our fake object, we want this fake object to fit exactly in the same place in memory. And the reason is it basically eases the fact that we can know exactly where in the chunk everything will be. And so we can replace the flink at the right offset, but also we could set another flag somewhere else in, in the object if needed, even though we don't need it for exploiting this particular vulnerability. And if we don't use hip feng shui techniques, basically it's a bit more random because if there is some case where we free our target object and then the two chunks coalesce, then when we are trying to replace the object and do an allocation, it's going to be random and the replacement object might not be part of our free chunk. In general, if the feng shui is bad, it's never going to fit this hole because there is a larger hole. So maybe it's going to use another hole somewhere else because it fits better. Or maybe it's going to use the start of the hole at the wrong offset. And so it's an alignment problem. So generally, I, I would say that heap feng shui is a general technique people use to make exploiting user after free more reliably because they have an expected layout on the heap and they can more reliably achieve their goal. It could be that the exploit works once by luck without doing the feng shui, but it's just that if you want it to work all the time or as much as possible, feng shui is a good method to achieve your goal.